Close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. And look after your mind to make sure that you're staying with the breath. There's nobody else who can check in on you. You're the one who has to be responsible for this. As the Buddha said, the self is its own mainstay. In other words, you have to create a refuge for yourself. You know, the way we're born, there's a lot of things where we can't really depend ourselves on. So we have to learn how to train the mind so it can be dependable. That's why the Buddha gave a list of qualities that make you a mainstay, qualities that allow you to depend on yourself. And one of them is having heard a lot of the Dharma. Not just having heard it, but also having thought about it, memorized it, so it makes sense to you. So you can remember it as you go through the day. Because the lessons in the Dharma are not here just for you to use while you're at the monastery. They're for you to use all day long. But I said, the teacher's responsibility is to give you a basis for deciding what's to be done and what's not to be done. We go through life, we're constantly making choices. This is where we need guidance, because so many of our choices we end up creating suffering. We often create harm for ourselves, harm for others. So we need some guidance. One, to believe that our actions really do make a difference. If you believe that everything you do is determined by some outside force, you're not going to be very careful about what you do. You just go on impulse. And you don't have a way of deciding what should and shouldn't be done. So first there's the principle, yes, your choices do matter. You do have choices, and they do matter. They do create results, depending on the quality of the mind. And then the Buddha gives you a way of, te a way of testing that, looking at your actions, looking at your intentions. If you see that something is going to cause harm, you don't do it. If you don't anticipate any harm, you go ahead and do it. While you're doing it, you have to look at the results. If you see that some harm is coming up, you stop. No harm, you keep going. And finally, after the action is done, you're still not done. You still have to look at the results of your actions. And if you ended up causing harm even though you didn't expect to or didn't anticipate it, you try to learn that lesson so you don't make that same mistake again. If you don't see any harm, then you can take joy in the fact that you're continuing on the training. And then you can continue training. This way the Buddha gives you a, a standard for determining what's to be done what's not to be done. When we have guidance like this, then we're protected. He said, this is how a teacher provides protection for the, st for the student, not running around and making sure the student doesn't do this or doesn't, or nothing happens to the student. Gives the student something the student can use to depend on inside to decide, okay, my actions really do matter. I better be careful, and this is how I choose what to do. I have a clear sense of what should and should not be done. So where do you get that? You Part of it is by learning the Dharma. This is why we have the chants. And we repeat the chants week after week. So these ideas get into your head. Otherwise, what gets in your head? You have all these earworms, all these stupid tunes you've heard from who knows when. We replace those with some of the tunes of the, of the chanting. And it'll remind you, as you're about to do something unskillful, you ask yourself, may I be happy? Is this going to lead to true happiness? Is this going to lead to all beings being be happy? When you think about how you're subject to aging, illness, and death, it reminds you to be heedful. You can't just go on your impulses. You've got to think ahead. What are you going to do when aging comes? What are you going to do when illness comes? What will you do when death comes? Are you prepared? Repeating these thoughts to yourself day after day after day, you, you get the right perspective. You become heedful, and you learn how to depend on yourself. So you don't just follow your impulses, but you actually create the, the causes for true happiness. And the happiness is not shaken by aging, shaken by illness, shaken by death something you really depend on. So listen, chant, memorize, and think about what you've listened to and chanted and memorized. So it actually bears fruit in your actions, and that's where you provide yourself with a real protector. <laughs>